Hi, I'm John Henry, the Changeover Wizard at Changeover.com with this month's Changeover Tip from Frame Industries. If you're doing a lot of work reducing changeover time with your machines and with your organizational structure, your operational tasks, other things, what about the package? You can save a lot of changeover time with properly designed packages, and sometimes marketing doesn't think about this. Now, the first thing I want to say is, as the old saying goes, nothing happens until somebody sells something. So if it's needed for marketing, if it's needed to make the package sell, not much you can do about it. But there's a lot of things that seem to be done just because the marketing and package designers don't know how the package is going to run on the line. And simple changes up front can have a big impact downstream. This is a pharmaceutical vial. The company made a product in two different sizes, a 5 and a 10 ml. Vials looked like they were the same diameter, but they were actually 63 thousandths of an inch difference. Now, you can't see that, but the machine can. What it meant was that instead of a five minute height changeover on three machines, it required a 90 minute three-dimensional changeover on five machines. They were losing 85 minutes a day to changeover. They were losing about 20% of their manufacturing capacity because of 63 thousandths of an inch. This is something that would have been simple when they were picking the vials. Just pick two vials from the Kimball, Wheaton, or other glass manufacturer that are the same footprint. Because it's pharmaceutical, it's almost impossible to change later on. This is a company that makes the batteries that you see hanging at the checkout counter, watch batteries and other electronics. They made about 850 SKUs for their own brand and for other brands. About half the cards were one eighth of an inch longer than the others. Now what this meant was that instead of simply swapping the cards out of the magazine, takes about 30 seconds. When they changed card size, they had to stop and do a changeover, which took about five or 10 minutes. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but they were doing three and four changeovers a shift, so they were losing a significant amount of time. We went to marketing, explained the problem, better yet, explained the costs, and they agreed to initiate a project to standardize all the card sizes. Now they had another issue, which was the plastic dial. These came with four, six, or eight batteries. Four to eight and back to four was simple. Just open and close four gates. Four to six or eight to six and back, much more difficult. Took a lot more time. We suggested to marketing that they eliminate the six pack, but they said no, there were some customers for whom four wasn't enough, but eight was too many and they needed the six pack. Okay, win some, you lose some. This client had a packaging line that they were doing cartoning on, had five different carton sizes. Four of the cartons were straight tuck. One of the cartons was reverse tuck. Changing between the straight tuck cartons was about what you'd expect, took about 40, 50 minutes. Changing between the straight tuck and the reverse tuck and back again was something I didn't even know was possible. But they were doing it, and it took four to five hours each time. Now, I don't know if there's any marketing reason for having straight and reverse tucks. I suspect not. I suspect it's just that the package designers, the marketeers, didn't realize the issues that this would cause. I got a call one night about 20 years ago. Bottling plant superintendent needed me in the plant right away. He showed me a new bottle. He'd just received 50,000 cases of it on the loading dock earlier that day, and it was tapered. 
He wanted to know if I had any ideas how to run it on his line. I told him, nope. He said it can't be done. They're going to fall over. Well, he finally managed to run it by slowing the line way down and hiring a bunch of temporary operators to sort of massage the bottles through the machines. But it was nothing that was sustainable over the long term. The company went back, redesigned the bottle, put a bumper at the bottom, and with the bumper, that bottle is essentially straight-sided as far as the packaging line is concerned. Would have been easy to add this bumper during the design phase if they'd thought about it. Nobody thought about it. If they'd sent a drawing of the bottle to the plant superintendent, he would have been able to tell them right off the bat that a tapered bottle wasn't going to run. He might have suggested the bumper. They would have saved a lot of money on making molds and making glass that they eventually had to redo. This company made a cosmetic product and had the word poison molded into the bottle. On the labeling machine, they had to have it oriented so that the label did not cover the poison legend, but they provided no way for orientation. An operator had to stand at the infeed to the labeler, orient each bottle manually, and still didn't get it quite right. What they had to do eventually, what they should have done initially, is added a notch to the bottom of the bottle. Now the bottle can be oriented with a simple rail, and it will hold straight all the way through the labeling machine. Simple changes up front in the package design can have enormous impact in the package manufacturing. I'm John Henry for Frayne Industries, where they like to make a big impact in your packaging, too. They make it work. Visit them online at www.framegroup.com, or better yet, if you're in the Chicago area, visit them in Carroll Stream. They're minutes from O'Hare Airport. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next month with another changeover tip.